World Harvest Church of Columbus, Ohio presents a message by Pastor Rod Parsley. There's something that has been lost in the body of Christ, and it is the reverence of an awesome God. We've had so much jumping and shouting and dancing, and thank God for all of it. Thank God for all of it. But the fear of the Lord has departed the midst of the children of God. We don't fear him, therefore we do not reverence him. If we do not reverence him, we cannot worship him. If we cannot worship him, he is not exalted. And if he is not exalted, he does not make his enemies his footstool. Now that's enough preaching to go home on today. We don't train our children to fear the Lord. We let them do anything they want in church. Half the time, we don't even care if they come. We don't reverence the Lord. We're worshiping God, and our, supposedly worshiping God, and our mind is on 10,000 things. And if we don't honor Him and we don't reverence Him, we cannot worship Him. We can praise Him. But anybody can praise. Rocks can praise. You're not listening to me. Rocks can praise. They don't have a spirit. They cannot worship because they do not have a spirit. Are you listening? We are separate and other from animals because we have a spirit. Hallelujah. We have a recreated spirit. Our born-again nature is our spirit. That's how we become a new creature, a new species of being that has never existed on the face of the earth before. Because when we get born again, God takes the supernatural spirit and welds it together with the soul. And man becomes something that has never been on the face of the earth before. Everybody's going to live forever somewhere. The unsaved the damned in eternal punishment, the saved in eternal blessing. Are you listening? When you go to heaven, not only will your spirit go, your soul will go. And when you go to hell, your soul will go. Your mind, your will, your emotions will go. They will be there. What separates us from the world is that we have a recreated human spirit. And God said, with that spirit, worship me. They that worship me shall worship me in spirit. Not in soul. Well, it's good. Not in soul, in spirit. And if we do not reverence him, we cannot worship him. And if we do not worship him, he is not exalted in the midst of us. What we want is not only the power of God, but the presence of God. And what brings the presence of God is worship and adoration. God cannot be explained. He can only be exalted. He cannot be analyzed only adored he is completely separate and other than everything else and in that power is his in that separation is his holiness he is holy because he is separate holy god is not just holy he is holy 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 what do we mean when we say holy? Thou art holy. We're actually saying separate. You are separate. Other. You are other. You are other than we are. You are not like us. You cannot be explained. We can only exalt you. We cannot with our finite mind analyze you. We can only adore you. We must exalt you. We must adore you because 
you are other than we are. You are separate from what we are. You are holy. You are separate. You are other. You are beyond us. There is none like a done to you. Not in all of the known worlds. That's worship. A rock can praise him. You can praise him without an up-to-date relationship with him. Did you hear what I said? But you can't worship him. You can dance, but you can't reverence. You can shout hallelujah, but you can't adore. Until you realize God. God is absolutely, inexpressibly, holy. He is so far beyond us that when we come into his presence, we are awed. We are overwhelmed at his greatness, at his majesty, at his mercy, at his splendor. Oh, hallelujah, unto the Lamb of God, holy, 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 separate, other, separate and other, and therefore we worship. He makes us holy. He makes us separate. You wonder how I'm not discouraged walking in the midst of a discouraged generation? I'm separate. I'm other. I'm holy. I'm sanctified unto the Lord. I am separated unto my God. And he is the only God. And he is the only holy one. And he is the only pure one. said, if you don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. But he said, only you can worship him. He met that woman at the well. She said, what have we to do with you? Seeing that you're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. He said, woman, give me a drink. She said, I can't give you a drink. How is it that you ask me for a drink? I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew and we have no dealings with one another. She said, your fathers, we worship here in this mountain, but your fathers worship in Jerusalem. He said, woman, the day is coming when they'll neither worship me in Jerusalem nor they'll worship me in this mountain, but they that worship me will worship me in spirit. Oh, we're tabernacling. The Holy Ghost is saying, amen. Amen. This is the day of tabernacles. We are entering into the Feast of Tabernacles where God himself will come and dwell in tabernacle among his people. But before that is possible, we must realize he is separate. We cannot be separated until we realize he is separate. He is other. We must not drag him down to humanity. He is the creator of all humanity. He speaks and worlds leap into being. He utters his voice and kingdoms fall. for praise, but there's more. It's more than just shouting. 
jumping and leaping, yelling and screaming and whirling. That's just the entryway into the holy place. But beyond the veil of the holy place is the holiest of holies. Oh, that's where God dwells. God doesn't dwell in the holy place. That's the place of cleansing. That's the place of purifying. That's the place where we get ready to go in where he is. My God, praise, gets us ready to go through the veil and enter into where God is. Because where God is is holy. And where God is is separate. And where God is is other. And where God is is majesty. And where God is is glory. There's glory in worship. Glory. The cloud. The cloud. The presence. The hovering, brooding, moving presence of the God of all worlds. We didn't come in here come into the presence of one like us. He is not like us. We are vile and we are ugly and we are dirty. Oh no, we're not. Oh yes, we are. Were it not for the blood of Christ shed on Calvary's tree. Think about that blood. Think about that blood that makes the vilest sinner clean. Worldly man able to wash himself in that blood, pull back that veil, walk into the presence of a holy, separate, and other God. Think about that blood. You were vile, full of sin and uncleanness full of lasciviousness and idolatry and envy and strife and heresy and reveling. You were contrary to God. You were separated from God. You were strangers of the commonwealth of Israel. But he has washed you in his blood. Listen to what the blood says. Ephesians says, we were without God. We were aliens to God. We were strangers of the covenants of promise. But we have been made nigh. Nigh unto God by that blood when he shed that blood on Calvary. The veil forty feet wide, twenty feet tall, four inches thick woven of one seam. Four inches thick. Because inside that holiest of holies was where the eternal presence of God majestic dwelt. And he was holy. And he was separate. And he was other. And in that otherness, and in that separation, and in that holiness, what's his power? I told you people, I'm in revival myself. You can go along with me if you want to. You can just hang out where you are. It doesn't make me any difference. I'm going to the holy place. I'm going to bow down. In the presence of a holy, separate, other God. And in due time, he will exalt me. We are not to be exalted. He is to be exalted. We are not to be adored. He is to be adored. We've had so much a 
the self-sufficient, lame, blind, deaf gospel. We have preached a gospel of humanism. We are this and we are that. Whatever happened to the inspiration of men and women that could explain, exclaim, rock of ages, clap for me, let me hide myself in thee, let the water and the blood from thy riven side which flow, rock of ages, clap for me, let me hide myself in thee. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss, and I pour contempt on all my pride, for he is holy. Holy, 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 and he is to be reverenced, not to be explained, but to be exalted, not to be analyzed, but to be adored. King of kings, Lord of lords, glorious, majestic, all power, all purity. All holiness, all hope, all joy, all justice, all mercy. He is God. Job said, when I consider the Lord... I tremble and fear. We don't fear him. We have an ungodly arrogance born of a gospel of humanism. He is other than we are. You better hear me. He is other than we are. Through him we are made pure. He is purity. Through him we are made holy. He is holy. Through him we have joy. He is joy. Through him we are healed. He is healing. His essence, his substance, and we come and arrogantly we approach his throne. We have traded boldness for arrogance and piety for pride. And God said pride comes before a fall. And like Samson, we will fall if we do not turn. If we do not pick up our head out of the lap of Delilah, we will fall. God's presence withdrawn equals judgment delayed. Today I am asked to have prayer for a one-year-old little girl. One-year-old little girl. I'm sorry. We don't reverence him. We talk about his children. We gossip. We ridicule. We backbite. We keep our head in the lap of the world and come into what we call the sanctuary of God with filth dripping from our hands and lift up filthy hands to a holy God. Hear the voice of God. Come and let us make ourselves clean. 
Come and let us dip in the blood which flowed from his riven side. Come and let us be as Paul and say, I count all things but dung. Let's let, come and let us let the agendas of man cease. Let us let the programs of the church cease. Let us let the clamor of our worship cease. Let us let the rattling of so-called giftings of God cease. Let us no longer be dependent upon our anointing. He is the anointed one. Let us no longer lean on the crutch of our own ability. To dung with our ability. To hell with our arrogance. To Hades with our pride. Let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of an awesome God. This is strange to some of you. This is revival preaching. Revival is when men rend their hearts in the presence of God. Revival is when men bear their souls, take off their masks, realize their lost and lowly estate as they exalt a holy God. It has been said, and I believe it's true, that if the Holy Spirit of God were withdrawn from the earth, 90% of all so-called Christian endeavor would go on unthwarted. We say we sing to God, we sing for ourselves. We say we preach to save the people, we preach for ourselves. We're about building our own kingdoms. God help the church. God help the church. God help the church with its head in the lap of Delilah that sings a happy song and says, well, I must be all right. I prayed and my enemies were defeated. Just pick it up where I left off last Sunday. God's presence withdrawn means judgment delayed. I am under the judgment of God. Are you listening to me? He is perfect justice. And I have drawn so nigh unto his presence that his judgment is swift. I was out of my own bed repenting in tears before God last night at 3 a.m. Because in the presence of God, he had revealed to me something that I had done that was incorrect. What is it that your mind would ask that question is for you to be in error? Are you listening to me? Are you listening to the Holy Ghost? Are you here like 99% of all Christians to soothe your conscience by your little Sunday morning exercise? Do you know God? Is God's presence nigh unto you? Are you walking in the holy place? Are you walking in the cloud? Is God's present envelop, presence enveloping you like a garment? Are you covered in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking in the holy place? How would your life change should Jesus come to spend 24 hours with you? What conversations would you change? What attitudes would you change? What fellowship?
fellowships and associations would you change? I believe there must be a more radical change in the church of Jesus Christ in the decade that we are living than the change that was wrought when Jesus saved us from our sins. And I am crying out to a holy God, change me. Change me. You pray whatever prayer you want. I want the presence of God so permanent and permeating upon my person that when I begin to take one slight step in a contrary direction to the perfect will of God for me, I sense the judgment of God swiftly and immediately. I do not desire to be deceived. I do not desire to deceive myself and saying everything is all right when the presence of God is withdrawn from my life. When we defile and desecrate the temple of a holy God. When we adorn ourselves with the filth of the world to come into the presence of a holy God. I don't know that anybody's hearing you. That's all right. I just preach to myself. I've been preaching to myself like this every day. Every day. I'll get back to your little sermons Sunday. Maybe. I'm not a person talking about being consumed. I am consumed. I'm not talking about being overwhelmed. Wouldn't it be nice to have revival? I'm in the middle of it. And revival is not just that sinners run to the altar of God. True revival is when the saints run to the altar of God and cry out for the merciful hand of God to be extended just one more time. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive me again. Revive me again. Fill my heart with thy love. Let my soul be rekindled with fire from above. Then I would sing hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, thine the glory. I've been revived, 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 revived again. Revival is not when the world gets right. Revival is when the church gets right. You're all looking at me like I've lost my mind, and probably I have. I can't help it, I've made a fatal mistake. I got my Bible, and I drew a circle around myself. And I said, God, send a Holy Ghost revival inside this little circle. I want your presence. I don't want to know everything's all right because you heard and answered my prayer. You answered the prayer of Balaam's ass. I want to know that I'm all right with you because you walk with me and talk with me along life's narrow way. You ask me how I know my God lives. He lives within my heart. I don't have to ask Bob or Bill or Nathan or Tom. I know his presence is upon me. I'm not just saved, I'm revived. In the midst of the years, when we get revived, he will send revival. 
Aren't you thirsty? Aren't you thirsty for a drink of living water? Aren't you thirsty? Aren't you hungry for the blood of the Lamb that causes you to love the unlovely? That causes you to walk humbly and with your head in a proper position. You want to be anointed. You don't get anointed standing on your feet with your hand raised in the air. You get anointed with your knees bent on the floor and your head bent over. Ready for him to pour the oil of anointing over your head. And when the church is humbled, the anointing of God will be poured upon us. Presence of God withdrawn means judgment delayed. You feel no judgment. You feel no conviction. You walk in arrogance and pride in the presence of a holy God. You flirt with the world. You lie and are full of deceit. There's treachery, backbiting, slander, envy, 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 envy. What is that? That's displeasure at the blessing of another. You see your brother or sister blessed. This couple has an offering received for them to go into the Soviet Union and preach the gospel. And people in this congregation began to talk about it. Why should we send them? Envy. 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 Preachers are full of envy. Somebody has a bigger congregation than they have. Full of envy. To the point that they scheme and get with lawyers and private detectives to try to bring one another down. So that the world can mock us and mock the God we serve. Christians that can't stay out of bed with the world. Lending their ear to the music of the devil. Walking in the ways of the world. Adultery commonplace in the church. Divorce commonplace in the church. With the same tongue, here's what the Bible said. With the same tongue, bless we God and curse men. The creation of God. I want revival. I don't want it. I've got it. I want you to have it. I want your heart to burn within you. God's presence withdrawn. His judgment delayed. We have become so immunized to sin in our society. We can sit in our homes and listen to men and women damn the name of the God we serve. We barely blink an eye. Summertime, we find ourselves adorning ourselves like the world. Young women running around with nothing but colored underwear on. Now listen, I'm not preaching a clothesline gospel. I'm not doing it. But you say you're a king, and you say you're a priest, and you say you're a holy nation unto God. When Aaron got ready to go into the presence of God... God got busy about his clothes. Amen or out, hallelujah, or you're a 
a heretic. I don't care. I'm going to preach the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm not telling you mad. I'm not telling you arrogantly. I'm telling you humbly. Let us repent. Let us repent that we might have revival. I want to get back to that desecrating the temple thing. Are you with me now? Just excuse me. That body, young lady, that your spirit lives in is the holy temple of a holy God. You ought to live in such a way that the presence of God was so strong in your life that it would be as if a priest came into the Holy of Holies with sin in his life when a young man tried to lay his hands on what does not belong to him. He ought to die in the car. And when we have revival, it will become commonplace. When we have this heartfelt Holy Ghost God sent revival, you'll not lie to the Holy Ghost in the presence of the people of God. They'll carry your bones out and bury you as they did Ananias and Sapphira. God's presence withdrawn means judgment delayed. But when the presence of God comes upon the church the way it's going to come, judgment will be swift. What's the difference in that bikini you slide into? Your bra and underwear. Your bra and underwear probably cover up more. You know I'm telling you the truth. Listen, I'm a pastor and I'm going to tell you where the pitfalls are. If you're loose with your body, you'll be loose with your spirit. And if you're loose with your spirit, the devil's going to get a foothold in your life. Don't let him do it. Slam the door. It's not worth it. Live holy before God. Live holy. Teach your children it's wrong. The Playboy magazines of the early 1950s Expose less of the female anatomy, anatomy than walks the beaches of this city this morning in Columbus, Ohio. The church has been immunized just a little bit of the world. And then it won't hurt you. Come on now, you know I'm telling you the truth. Oh boy, oh boy, we, we got it on the run this morning. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I may not open my Bible yet. Yes, I have. I got one down in here. I'm flipping through the pages. I'm showing you a holy God. You're a backbiter. You're a liar. You're a gossiper. You know it, and you need to repent. You're full of envy. You curse the blessings of others. Something must be wrong. They must be a thief if they have more than I have. Well, then that makes you a thief in the eyes of everyone that you've got more than they've got. We haven't taught our children to reverence God. This is the house of God. This is where the giftings and the power of God move. We let our children sit in the sanctuary of God and write notes to one another. We get up and go to the restroom. I just can't believe that you would walk out of the Holy of Holies 
from the presence of a holy God and tell him I need to go in the hallway and get a drink of water. I'll be right back. We're cold. We're indifferent. We're formal. We're full of religion. We're full of dead men's bones. We're clouds with no water. We're talk with no proof. Pride with no power. Arrogance with no aroma. The minute some fashion hits Paris, Paris, you see it in the church 30 days later. Paris says, wear your skirts three inches above your knees. All of a sudden, everybody goes to wearing the skirts three inches above their knees. Looking around on this platform, I better not find what I'm looking for. If you ever dare sit on this platform, you sit here and have to try to squirm to keep people from seeing up your legs. Get off this platform. You have no business here. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not mad. I want a Holy Ghost revival. I want the souls of men ablaze with the presence of God. I want a move of God like no generation has ever seen. And to get it, we're going to have to be separate. We're going to have to be other. Get out of those stretchy socks pulled over your body. Brother, the Bible says a woman ought to adorn herself modestly. And such is not provocatory. I might as well jump all over to the men. Run around on beaches, look like they've, their athletic supporter would cover more. Who are you trying to impress? Every man walking the face of the earth got the same equipment you've got. Who are you trying to impress? Dr. Summerall told me one time, he said, I could never understand how a man could lose his ministry, lose his family, virtually lose his wife for another woman. They all come equipped with the same equipment. Just a little bit of wisdom for you. They all come equipped from the factory with the same basic equipment. You listening to me? I'm not I'm not meddling. And whether you listen to me or not is up to you. I am not required to cause you to listen. I'm only required to speak. And I'll tell you what I'm hearing. I'm hearing come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Come unto me, sanctify yourselves unto me. I am holy, I am separate, I am other. Come unto me and I will make you like myself and we will cover the earth with the glory of God as the waters cover the very seas. You ought to tell everybody in Columbus I'm preaching like this. Please turn the tape over at this point for the continuation on side two.
Brother, when you get radically saved, your allegiance changes. You get radically saved, your attire changes. God got that priest. He didn't dress anybody the way he dressed that priest. Now, I'm not talking about legalism. I'm talking about holiness. I can't help that somebody made it legalism. I can't help that. But if the reality of that were true, if it was just legalism, if it was only legalism that had anything to do with the way we dress and act in this world, then it wouldn't make any difference if we just came in here new. I mean, we ought to just come new. Let's just do that. Let's just come new. If it doesn't make any difference to God, let's just come new. Let's just all take our clothes off right now and worship God. Well, then how much is enough? Is here enough? Is here, is here enough? What's enough? If here's enough, seems to me like here's enough. I'll tell you what's enough. When you cease to be a woman of God adorned modestly, when you draw and attract attention to yourself, you're not in here to draw attention to yourself. You're not in here to be exalted. You're not in here to find a date or a new husband or a wife. This is the house of God. This is the sanctuary of God. We come in here to worship a holy God. I love you. Some of you men three times more interested in the size of your biceps than the size of your spiritual power. You get in front of those mirrors. You're sick. You're sick. You're sick. You're in love with dirty, rotten, stinking, sinful flesh. That stuff's going back to dust, man. Don't you know that? You can pump it from now till Jesus comes. And when he splits the eastern sky, it's falling to the ground in a hunk. It's junk. Flesh is junk. Some of you all act like a dog in heat after sex. You run through the TV dials trying to find a little bit. It ain't hard to find. You just about find it on the cereal box. You know I'm telling you the truth. Brother, we're called to be holy. What does that mean? Separate. What does that mean? Other. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't want what the world's got. I had my fill of that. I don't want it. I'm not interested in it. I'm not interested in being a corporate giant. Half the preachers in America today do better in a corporation somewhere. They're not interested in people. They're not interested in suffering, sighing, crying, dying humanity. All they see is numbers and dollar signs and who's the biggest and whose picture's the most in the Christian periodical. It's sickening and repulsive in the eyes of God. And if any generation ever needed a revival, it is this generation. And if any area of the world ever needed it, it is the North American continent, including the United States of America and the Church of Jesus Christ. God send the Holy Ghost revival. Change us. Rearrange us. Make us like you. I'm not talking about legalism. I'm 
talking about holiness. Holiness. I'm not running around with a measuring stick measuring your sleeves. I don't have my stick out measuring your hair. I'm just saying when you really get revival in your soul, honey, it wouldn't matter if you took a burlap bag and cut a place for your head and arms. But we've had this doctrine of humanism. We are supposed to be above the world. No, you're not. You're supposed to be beneath it. Well, that's a radical thought for you. Right? I said, that's a radical thought for you. We've had this arrogance about us. We are above the world. Look at us. The blessing of God is upon us. The world has one. And Klein's dress, we have three. Because we are prosperous. Let the world see our prosperity and they will flock to God. What a lie. They haven't. They haven't. You pumped that stuff out for years. Your altars are yet to be full. I haven't. I've been in your conventions. Three weeks at a time and three services a day and then seen 20 people saved. That's a lie. That's a lie. The world isn't going to see your prosperity and run to God. What are you talking about? And if they did, it'd be the wrong, with wrong reason and wrong motive that they can. Can't we? Why don't we think straight? This is not a, this is not a, multi-level business opportunity. This is not Amway or Shackley. But that's what we've acted like. We're blessed so everybody wants to run and be like us. That's crazy. All you're doing is offering them more of what they've already got. Am I against prosperity? Oh, no, believe absolutely in it. Totally in it, completely in it. I believe that prosperity is from the propagation of the gospel. I believe that God's people ought to have the best, ought to live in the best, and drive the best, and have the best, and that's fine. So what? What does that have to do with the attitude that I'm talking about? We're not above this world. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I'll show you who I am among you. Give me your coat. Give me your coat. He said, I'll show you who I am among you. Took his coat, wrapped it around himself. Girded himself round about. Got a basin of water. Stooped down. Said, take your shoes off, man. I want to wash your feet. I want to wash your feet. He that is the greatest among you, let him become the servant of all. You want to win the world to Jesus? Start serving them. Start giving them what you got. Start washing their feet. Start loving them. Start pouring your life into them. They'll run to God. They'll run to God and say, I want to be a person like that kind of person. Tired of Christians and preachers walking in arrogance? Walk in like they think they're somebody. So you can't realize you're a somebody till you first found out you ain't nobody. And he is everybody. And he is everything. He is all in all. Take my houses and my lands. Change my dreams. Change my plans. I'm placing my whole life in your hands. For whatever it takes. 
for my will to break. Lord, that's what I'm willing to do. Come into the kingdom of God seeking financial blessing. Some people got born again. Thought they did for that reason. You know the way to get born again? Die. You don't walk to God with some proud, arrogant look on your face like God owes you something. God owes you nothing. You owe him everything. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I'm talking to you about a holy God. I'm talking to you about respecting a holy God. I'm talking to you about not desecrating the temple of God. We want the gifts of the Holy Spirit to flow through us. Woo. Huh? In the temple that the Holy Ghost lives in, we defile at every opportunity. People say to me, say to me, well, well, what about this? Well, what about this? What about if I have a job and I don't smoke on the church grounds? That's impossible. You are the church grounds. What are you talking? This is not this is not where God dwells. This is where God dwells. He doesn't dwell. Don't read your Bible. He doesn't dwell. Get that bunch of traditional garbage out of your heart. If you smoke out there, you might as well smoke in here. It don't make any difference. You're desecrating the temple any way you look at it. This is not the temple. I'm not. I didn't say smoking would send you to hell. Now, just relax. That's just a prime example. But it really doesn't touch very many. I guess I ought to touch this one. I ought to talk about that tongue that you bless God with and curse men with. I guess that's the one I ought to talk about. Because you act real holy with it in here. And you murder people with it outside this door. You know you do. You know you do. You do it in your prayer life. Your little prayer ring. Gossip central. You, you know what I'm talking about. Well, now don't tell anyone else. Why don't you just publish it, honey? They're about to tell everybody they know. Because they're just like you. There's only way you got the information. Somebody told you not to tell somebody else. Now here you are telling them not to tell somebody. And it's not glib. And it's not light. This is not a light thing. A holy God is not a light thing. Are you listening? It's not a light thing. The presence of God is an awesome thing. And you think you're all right because you don't have any conviction. You live like the world you know you do. Come in here on Sunday morning, lift your hands, and act like, act like you're a saint. You haven't opened your Bible in the last week. You haven't prayed 30 minutes in the last week. You haven't won anybody to Jesus this week. Nobody knows God's alive as a result of your testimony. Nobody knows that. You didn't spend hours this week praying in the Holy Ghost. You haven't been prostrate on your face before God, weeping out for a lost and hurting, crying, dying world. You know you haven't. But we come in here and we act like everything's all right. You know why? Because we don't feel any conviction. You know why? Because the Spirit of God's already departed. You don't even recognize it. You're like Samson. You've laid your head in the lap of Delilah for so long and got up and went out and God heard and answered your prayer and you think because he heard and answered your prayer everything's all right but the judgment of God delayed means the presence of God is withdrawn Amen. Samson got up that last time and said I'll shake myself like at the other times but this time he shook himself and he shook one time too many the presence of God was departed off of him and he didn't even know it the saddest verse in the Bible records those words and Samson wist not that the presence of God had already departed some of you running headlong out into spiritual warfare and you're about to get your clock cleaned because you don't even know the Spirit of God's not on you. You've been so hyped up. You've had such a media blitz into your life about how perfect you are and how wonderful you are, how God's just like you and you're just like God. And that's a lie. 
He is absolutely holy because he is absolutely separate. He is unlike you, and he is absolutely other than you. And until you realize that, you will have no reverence for him. And if you do not reverence him, you cannot worship him. And if you cannot worship him, his presence cannot be upon you. I might as well be on another planet. I just, I just feel like I'm on another planet talking a foreign language that nobody understands. Sit and discern and decipher everything that I say. Try to analyze what I'm saying. Why don't you stop analyze what I'm saying? Why don't you listen to what I'm saying? Why don't you forget about everybody else and thinking about the people that you know that gossip because you were sitting right in the ring of them while they were doing it. That's how you know about it, Gertrude. If your name's Gertrude, I wasn't talking about you. I just don't know anybody named Gertrude. <laughs> I just love you. And I know this is not three points alliterated, 12 illustrations. I understand that. But you're just going to have to put up with me. You're just going to have to put up with me till God gets done what he's doing. And I can't stop preaching while he's doing it. And I can't help it when I open my mouth, what he's doing comes out. And I hear God calling us back to holiness and calling us back to purity and calling us back to power and calling us to sanctification and calling us to separation. God is absolutely holy. And he cannot abide unholiness. Some of you desecrate the Sabbath. Oh, oh, for a revival. When men forget who's playing Sunday afternoon football. Oh, for a revival. Oh, for a revival. When women are more compelled to get in the Word of God than the most recent Avon and Tupperware catalogs. Oh, for a move of God. Only a generation, listen to this, listen closely. Only a generation that has seen so little of the power of God can talk the way we talk about our present condition. Because if we had seen a move of the power of God, we would know it is so far different than what we are experiencing on the face of the earth today. We would be humbled into the floor before an awesome God and ask him to move on our lives. Where are the homes? Where are the homes? Like the home that I grew up in when I'd come in five, six, seven years of age, run in the house and hear the sweeper running upstairs, run upstairs and find my mother prostrate on the floor in a pool of tears weeping before God to save her children, weeping, worshiping God, weeping, asking God to purify her and to cleanse her. Where are the moms like that? Are they at your house? Is that what your children hear? Or is what they hear at Sunday afternoon table everything rude you can possibly think of to say about the preacher? I know which of your children respect me and which don't. And I can tell you whether you respect me or not by the way they act. When they, when they run out here in the hallway and, and look at me and say, Hey, Rod, I know how you talk at home. But when I walk down the hallway and their eyes just fall just a little bit. And they say, hello, pastor. I know that the parents in that home respect me, and that they respect the things of God, because that child is learning to respect the things of God. I know that. I know that. We don't reverence the things of God. Did you hear me? That's the reason we have so little of it. 
because we don't reverence them. We don't honor them. We don't respect them. We get up and walk out on the service when souls are trying to come to the altar. Some of you are here this morning. I've said this about three times, but I always say it at the end of the service after 500 of you have got up and walked out. I'm going to say it right now. You don't honor the things of God. You don't honor God. And therefore, the power of God's not present in your life. And you blame God for it, and it's a lie. You don't reverence the things of God. You don't respect the things of God. Therefore, you do not possess the things of God. What you respect, to borrow a quote from my good friend Mike Murdoch, what you respect comes towards you. What you respect comes toward you. You respect God, he draws nigh to you. You respect the things of God, they draw nigh to you. You respect the presence of God, it draws nigh to you. I want to see a revival. I'm going to see a revival. Now, I, I don't, you have to understand me, I'm already seeing it, I'm already experiencing it. I want you to have it. And maybe you are. And I pray that you are. I pray that you are. I had this typed up this morning. God is strikingly holy. Overwhelmingly, awesomely, inexpressibly holy. And you know what holy means? Tell me what holy means. We sing songs, holy, holy, holy. We don't know what we're singing. What does it mean? What does holy mean? You all been singing it all morning. Somebody on this platform, tell me what holy means. Separate. Other. Separate. Other. God is inexpressibly separate than we are. Isaiah declared it this way. His thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. Paul expressed it this way. Who hath known the mind of God that he may instruct him? We need to get a bigger God. In this last decade, we have had such a, such a gospel of humanism preached to us that it has reduced God almost to just a superhuman level. Let me tell you something. God is no superhuman. He's not Superman or Batman. He is the undeniable master of the universe. That's who he is. He's God. He utters a word, and the worlds leap into me. He's not like you. You listening to me? He's not like you. He does not think like you think. Your thinking is full of doubt. His is full of faith. Yours is full of weakness. His is full of power. Yours is full of failure. His is full of absolute victory. He knows he cannot be defeated. You think he can't be. He knows he can't be. God in heaven, I hope somebody's writing this down. You've reduced God to a superhuman level. He's just some superman to come along and help you out of your problems as you go glibly and merrily and arrogantly about your way. It's time to be humbled in the presence of God. And I don't mean humble because God's this mean. I mean humble because He is holy. He is so unlike us. Do you know what gives things their value? Think about this. Is this gold?
This is plated gold. This is solid gold. Which one has more value? The solid one. Why? Because this is what we call a precious metal. Why do we call it precious? How come aluminum doesn't cost as much as gold? Because it's more abundant. In other words, the less there is of a thing, the more it's value. I wish you could feel the chill bumps all over me right now. Of course, I'm just telling you this for the first time. I've been being bathed in it for weeks. You think about that. Why do we worship God instead of men? Look around this room. Here's one, there's 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 one. Quit worshiping men. They're a dime a dozen. Oh, yes, but this is a special man. Well, that depends. His value is based upon quantity. Are you listening? We worship God because there is none like him. He's the only one. And we fall on our face before him. Because there is none like him. He's the only one. Glory. I said he's the only one. You know why my wife is so precious? You know why I adore her? She's my only wife. She's the only one. I have no other wife like her. You understand me? You understand me? Do you understand me? Glory. He's the only God. He's the only one that can get you out of your problems. He's the only one that can save you from your sin. He's the only one that can cut you off from a life of losing. He's the only one that can break the crack habit. He's the only one that has prepared heaven for you. He's the only one that dethroned and defeated the devil. He is the only one that shed his blood on Calvary to ransom and redeem you. And that blood, blood is precious because there has never been, nor will there ever be, any other blood like that blood. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Overwhelmingly, awesomely, inexpressibly holy. He is completely separate and other. I laid in bed last night and thought about that. He's other. There's, there's nothing like him. Not Superman, not the devil, not a superhuman. No, nothing. Not the gods of Baal. Not the gods of addiction. Not the gods of sexual immorality. We have exalted sex as a god. Are you listening? But there's no god like him. No, no, there's no god as big as mine. Are you listening? He is absolutely free from sin and evil. God now. Not you. God. 
You want to know why we worship him? It's not because he put a new ring on our finger and a new car in our driveway. It's not because he did some temporal material thing. He gave us a new dress. That's not the reason we worship him. We worship him in spirit because we recognize there is none like him. No, not one. Now, if you're going to serve God, know Him. If you want to worship Him, some of you try to work up your worship. Okay, let's think, let's think why I should. Okay, I'm trying to get into this thing. Now, now, why should I worship? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, He healed my body. Thank you, Lord. How childish. That's not worship anyway. That's praise. Praise is, is adoration for what God has done. Worship is adoration for who God is. And one is higher than the other as far as the east is from the west. Praise is an entry step. Worship is the presence. Well, I'm teaching you this morning. I am teaching you Sunday morning bunch. I am teaching you this morning. You ought to pack this building out on Sunday night because you want to get into the presence of a holy, awesome, separate, other God. One, you want to see some. If I had a three-headed calf in here tonight, you'd all pack the building out. Because you ain't ever seen a three-headed calf. Well, I got something greater in here tonight than any three-headed calf. I've got a God that is omnipotent who has things yet to be released out of him that have never been seen on the face of the earth. Things to be heard that have never been spoken. That's who's going to grace this building tonight at 7 o'clock. A God that is different than anything you've ever seen or experienced. God with somebody shout. He's bigger than you think. He's greater than you've imagined. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that your finite mind could ever ask or think. He is God of heaven and God of earth. He rules and he reigns. He is the Lord God omnipotent. He has all power and all knowledge. He is all absolute mercy and absolute justice and absolute power. He is totally good. There is no bad in him. He is not a mixture. He is not an alloy. He's not a little of this and a little of that. He is all that. Who's got a diamond? Give me a diamond. Somebody give me a diamond. Hurry up and give me a You might know a preacher had one. Here's a diamond. He ought to have ten more like it. There's a diamond. Now this diamond may be other than the diamond you've got on. I don't know. Maybe the one you've got on is other than this diamond. You know what would make this one more valuable than yours? If this one was absolutely pure. Hey, hey, we think gold has value because of its purity and because of its limited supply. God, I'll tell you how pure God is. Look how yellow that stuff is. God is building a city with streets made out of the stuff you can see through. It's so pure. Glory be to God. Somebody praise the only true and living God. God, I worship you. You are holy. You are separate. You are other. I want to finish my little paper. He is perfect light. Perfect truth, perfect justice, and perfect love. 
There is nothing to which we can compare him. How do you describe him? He's bigger than the mountains. He's deeper than the seas. He's more majestic than the heavens. He made them. He's wiser than men. He created them out of dust. There are no words which will describe him. John the Revelator said, he's got feet like brass. His eyes, now listen, you think that's something. You think that's something for somebody to have eyes of fire. He doesn't have eyes of fire. That's the only thing to which John could compare it. Hey, you think it's you think it's grandiose to hear heaven described in this book? That was a mortal's reference to try to describe what was indescribable. We are going to a country that mortal tongue has no words to describe, and this world has nothing with which to compare it. To serve a God that is the only one like Him. Holy Ghost is preaching today. He cannot be explained, only exalted. He cannot be analyzed. And that's what we've tried to do with the exaltation of the teaching ministry in the last 15 years. We tried to analyze God. This is God. This is what makes God work. If you push this button, this happens. Oh, forget it, man. You can't figure God out. Just serve him with gladness. Come before his pr- Oh, oh, serve the Lord. Quit trying to analyze him. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Give thanks, all ye earth, and be glad, all ye lands. For the Lord, he is God, and besides him, there is no other. Somebody shout. All creatures of our God and King, to him hallowed praises bring. He is not, you can stay standing. Everybody stand. He is not just holy. He is holy, 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 holy. What else can we say? Seeing his splendor is more than we can bear. And his presence to behold is completely overwhelming. And his glory overpowering. Do you know him? Is this the God that you're walking with? Is his presence on you in such a powerful way that the moment you begin to step out of line, conviction is sweet to your heart? When is the last time you fell prostrate on your floor and bathed him with tears of adoration for who he is? This concludes a message by Pastor Rod Parsley. If you've enjoyed this ministry tape by Pastor Parsley and would like to receive a free catalog of other audio and video cassettes, simply write to World Harvest Church, Post Office Box 32932, Columbus, Ohio, 43232. Be sure to request a free tape catalog.